Paul's Epistle to Titus Introduction Titus first appears in Scripture in Paul's second epistle to the Corinthians, where Paul said he had no rest in his spirit when he came to Troas because he could not find Titus. 2 Corinthians 2 verses 12 to 13 Paul is later comforted at the coming of Titus in Macedonia beginning in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 6, where he was Paul's partner and fellow helper with the Corinthians. He was responsible for gathering the offering there and delivering it to the saints in Jerusalem. 2 Corinthians 7 to 8 Titus was a Greek who Paul took with him to the Jerusalem council along with Barnabas who was not compelled to be circumcised, which is mentioned in Galatians 2 verses 1 to 3. It was after Titus ministered in Corinth for a time that Paul reassigned him to the island of Crete because of his strengths and the island's notorious weaknesses. See Paul's testimony concerning the Cretans in Titus 1 verse 12. The last mention of Titus is just before Paul's martyrdom in Rome where he is mentioned by Paul as having had left Paul in Rome to go to Dalmatia previously which would mean that he spent many years helping Paul as a messenger to the churches. 2 Timothy 4 verse 10 Chapter 1 The Due Time Testifier Titus 1 verse 1 Paul, a servant of God, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, according to the faith of God's elect, Jesus Christ is God's elect. It is the faith of Jesus Christ being spoken of here, not faith in Jesus Christ, it is the faith that came to the world as a result of Jesus Christ dying on the cross. This was a different faith than what was prior to the cross, because Israel was still under the law of Moses then. That faith would be according to Paul's gospel. Romans 2 verse 16 and Galatians 3 verses 21 to 26. We put our faith, which can fluctuate from day to day, in the faith of Jesus Christ, God's elect, which never wavers and it is the faith of Christ which that saves us. Paul as the apostle of the Gentiles was to preach concerning the faith of Jesus Christ, God's elect, which was given only after the law was fulfilled. Isaiah 42 verse 1 says, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. God's elect is Jesus Christ. The elect is not a reference to you. The faith of God's elect is the faith of Jesus Christ. We are elect in the sense that we are members of Christ's body. We are literally in the elect. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 4, Knowing, Brethren beloved, your election of God. We cannot be godly if we do not acknowledge those things which come from God. To not rightly divide the word of truth, the truth for this age that we now live in. Titus 1 verse 2, In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. In hope of eternal life, God has promised eternal life for both Jew and Gentile alike by the faith of Jesus Christ, God's elect, before the world began. He promised it to himself, and to the other members of the Godhead. God, that cannot lie, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. 1 John 1 verse 5 If God could lie, he would not be God. Before the world began, this promise was kept hidden God until it was made manifest unto the apostle of the Gentiles after the resurrection of Jesus, because had Satan known of this, he would never have crucified the Lord of glory according to 1 Corinthians 2 verses 7 to 8. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9, Who hath saved us, and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Titus 1 verse 3, But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. In due times, this is a reference to the time period which began with the calling of Saul of Tarsus as the apostle of the Gentiles. Why was it due time then? Because Israel had now rejected the offer of the kingdom at the preaching of Stephen, and they fell at this time. 1 Timothy 1 verses 15 to 16 says, This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul was the first in whom God would show forth all long-suffering to the world by bestowing mercy on the chief, leader, of sinners who was leading the persecution against the kingdom church. Paul is the pattern for all who believe on Christ after him. That means that God started something new with the apostle of the Gentiles, which is mentioned over and over again in Paul's writings, which was committed unto me. God's word for the body of Christ today was manifested through preaching that was committed unto the Apostle Paul, and not to anyone else, according to the commandment of God. Grace came after the law, and it was revealed to the body of Christ, by the Apostle of the Gentiles, not to Israel by the twelve Apostles to Israel. Titus 1 verse 4, to Titus, mine own son after the common faith, 
grace, mercy, and peace, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. The common faith, Paul had led Titus to the Lord, and he discipled him in the same faith he had. He was not a kingdom believer saved with the gospel of the kingdom, he was a member of the body of Christ. Paul led Titus to the Lord with his gospel that was committed unto him, and then took him on into perfection by the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Romans 16 verses 25 to 26, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. Grace, mercy, and peace, Grace is the dispensation that we live in today. Mercy is explained in Titus 3 verse 5, and peace is what we enjoy in this present dispensation because of what Christ did for us at the cross. This was not just some common greeting of the day that Paul was sharing with them as those who don't understand what he was saying teach. From God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace are not from Paul, nor the Holy Spirit. Romans 5 verses 1 to 2 says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Titus 1 verse 5, For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city, as I had appointed thee. Set in order the things that are wanting. Titus was to help the church in Crete to fully understand all that God had delivered unto the Apostle Paul so they too could have a fully functioning church. Ordain elders in every city. Titus was appointed by the Apostle Paul to ordain elders in every city where new believers were. They were to lead the new congregations in those cities. The qualifications are mentioned in the following verses. Titus 1 verses 6 to 7, If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless, as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. If any be blameless, Titus was to discern the qualifications of those considered for ordination to the position of an elder, pastor, by seeing if they met God's criteria to be considered blameless. The husband of one wife, this doesn't mean that a person whose spouse has died cannot be considered for ordination as an elder and pastor if they have been remarried, nor is it speaking of having one wife at a time. It is speaking about an adulterer who gets divorced from their first wife, who then remarries and wants to be considered as an elder. Having faithful children, they were to be good examples in the area of the family. Their children were to be examples as well. Children often reflect on the ability of the parents to parent properly, which transfers over to leading the congregation. 1 Timothy 3 verses 4 to 5 1 that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Titus 1 verses 8 to 9, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Holding fast the faithful word, someone who does not understand the mystery program, who cannot rightly divide that from Israel's prophecy program is not qualified to be an elder in the body of Christ today. They obviously cannot fulfill the rest of verse 9. Titus 1 verses 10 to 11, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. They of the circumcision, the elders were to shut up the circumcision who were trying to impose Jewish fables and men's commandments on the body of Christ, because turn people from the actual truth given to us by our apostle. This is happening in many churches today as pastors search for more sermon material and things to entertain their people who are flocking to the Hebrew Roots movement which eventually leads to work salvation, whose mouths must be stopped. These groups are both opposed an inerrant Bible and to rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, Titus 1 verses 12 to 14, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men, that turn from the truth. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men, the Hebrew Roots movement loved to teach Jewish fables to get around mystery doctrine and claim if you know what they are teaching you will understand the deeper things of God. That turn from the truth, they are deceiving and being deceived and need to be rebuked sharply. Titus 1 verses 15 to 16, Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled, and unbelieving is nothing pure, 
but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable, and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Unto every good work reprobate, it is their works that deny God, but some, possibly many, were saved, and just rebellious to the truth that had come to them from Paul. Their works were abominable to God, because they deliberately were disobedient to the truth, which made their works, teachings, reprehensible to God. A person that is right with God will receive the truth with gladness, and will check out anything that seems contrary to the word of God. A person can become defiled with the fables, and traditions of men, and refuse to see truth. Chapter 2 things which become sound doctrine. Titus 2 verses 1 to 2, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. Speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. These are found in verses 2 through the end of this epistle. See 1 13. Titus 2 verses 3 to 5, The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed, not give to much wine, let everything be done in moderation. Titus 2 verses 6 to 10 Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things shewing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine shewing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech, that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but shewing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. Adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. Your testimony is like a coat that you put on, adorn, that the whole world sees. It could be one that attracts people to your Savior. It will be the latter, if you adorn yourself in all things commanded us by our apostle, not just the ones that come easy to you. Titus 2 verses 11 to 12, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly, in this present world. The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, Paul was not saying that at the time that the book of Titus was written, that every single person in the remote corners of the world had heard the gospel of grace preached. He was saying that God had now sent Paul, and now us, to go to all the world with the message of reconciliation 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19 through 21, to every man, regardless of whether they were a Jew or a Gentile. The twelve were limited in their outreach ministry to the circumcision, with one exception Cornelius family Acts 10, Matthew 10 verses 5 to 7. Because God has been so gracious to us in saving us by His grace, we are to exhibit that grace towards others, and live before them a life that would exalt Christ and draw others to Him. Titus 2 verse 13, looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. That blessed hope, we in the body of Christ are looking for the rapture of the body, the church, when we will all see Christ as He appears to us in the clouds in all His glory just before He takes us to begin our new roles in heavenly places. The blessed hope is not the revealing of Christ to Israel, when every eye shall see Him. It is the mystery that God revealed to Paul, concerning the church, which is His body. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 14-17 The blessed hope is the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 6 verse 14 and 2 Timothy 1 verse 10 It was not known in Matthew 24, or Paul could not have called it a mystery in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51. Titus 2 verse 14, Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. It was our sin that originally separated us from our Creator, and it is the death of the Son of God who lived a perfect life on our behalf, that redeemed us back from our father the devil. A peculiar people, we were purified by Christ's work on our behalf in redeeming us, that we should be peculiar to this world when we zealously follow the things that he has dispensed to us in the body of Christ through Paul's epistles. The children of Israel were told that they would be a peculiar treasure unto God above all the people if they kept his covenant in Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6 and Deuteronomy 14 verse 2. We are not Israel under the law, we are the church, the body of Christ. Colossians 1 verse 18 through 24 which is under grace. Romans 6 verse 14 and 15. Zealous of good works. Are you zealous about following the pattern the Apostle Paul set for the body of Christ to establish believers and new churches? If not, 
why not? Titus 2 verse 15, these things speak, and exhort, and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Rebuke with all authority. As believers today, we are not to be afraid to rebuke with all authority. We should welcome rebuke when it is necessary for our own good, so that we may become more profitable unto God and others. Chapter 3. Profitable versus Unprofitable. Titus 3 verses 1 to 2 put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men. Be subject to principalities and powers, God has ordained government, and he opposes lawlessness. We are to be involved in politics, and government, and we are to support what is right, and to change what is wrong in peaceful ways. Titus 3 verses 3 to 5, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. According to his mercy he saved us, Titus 1 verse 3, we were saved not by our works, but by a merciful God when he sent his Son to die for us as our payment for our sin. The washing of regeneration, this speaks of his cleansing us by the shedding his blood, not by water baptism. Romans 5 verse 9 and Ephesians 1 verse 7, renewing of the Holy Ghost, we are made into something new, the one new man Ephesians 2 verse 15, when we believe the gospel and we are placed into the body of Christ by his spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13, Titus 3 verses 6 to 7, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life, which he shed on us abundantly, the Holy Ghost, which renewed us at our salvation. Justified by his grace, Romans 3 verse 24, Heirs according to the hope of eternal life, I am a joint heir with Christ, and there was nothing I did to deserve it. Titus 3 verse 8, This is a faithful saying, And these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. This is a faithful saying, This is now the final time Paul uses these words together to impress upon his readers the importance of what he is about to say. The other three times are also in the other pastoral epistles. 1 Timothy 1 verses 15 to 16, 4 colon 9 and 2 Timothy 2 verse 11. Maintain good works. The good works are defined by Paul's epistles as the following of the pattern of good works that he laid out for us in this dispensation to follow, which edify the body of Christ and help establish new churches. There is no hint of Paul ever saying someone today should maintain good works as a means to maintaining their salvation in any of his epistles ever. These things are good and profitable unto men, good works produce fruit in the body of Christ, and that is what we are to be doing today. If we are not doing what Paul did and instructed us to do, why is that? You are not profiting yourself, or anyone else for that matter. Titus 3 verse 9, But avoid foolish questions, and genealogies, and contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Avoid foolish questions, and genealogies, what group of people focused on their genealogies? The Jews. These were probably the kingdom saints trying to Judaize grace believers amongst the Gentiles. Strivings about the law, some sought to infiltrate the body of Christ, which some thought were just another sect of Judaism, and to bring it into submission to the law. Paul knew they had to be challenged with the word of God. What possible benefit could there be of tracing someone's bloodline back after the cross? What did it matter? What spiritual gain was there? None. But yet there were those who would come along claiming descent from this tribe, or that, as if that gave them the corner on the truth somehow. Silly people would give heed to them. Titus 3 verses 10 to 11 A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted, and sinneth, being condemned of himself. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Paul wanted Titus to try to reason with those that would try to draw away people from the faith to follow their own ideas. These were to be rejected and not allowed any place in the church to teach their lies. Once a person was rejected because of their false teachings, they were to be marked as someone that is preaching another gospel and avoided. Knowing that he that is such is subverted, his faith has been overthrown and he is trying to do the same to others. Titus 3 verses 12 to 13, When I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to winter. Bring Zenas the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting unto them. Come unto me to Nicopolis, 
Paul is not writing for Nicopolis, he plans on going there for the winter. The word Nico means to rule over, like the Nicolaitans, and Polis, which simply mean a city. Revelation 2 verse 6, But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Bring Zenas the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently. Paul is about to go before Nero for the last time, which is why he wants Zenas, the lawyer, there. Paul had an assignment for Apollos once he arrived in Nicopolis, because Paul had to return to Rome. He also wants Titus to come and give a report on his ordaining and teaching the elders of Crete how they can better serve God. Titus 3 verses 14 to 15 And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. All that are with me, salute thee. Greet them that love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. It was written to Titus, ordained the first bishop of the Church of the Cretans, from Nicopolis of Macedonia. Let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses. We see the importance of the body of Christ doing the works Paul told us to do, because they produce fruit. If churches die, it is because they did not maintain good works. Paul was probably ministering to a congregation as this epistle was being written before his final imprisonment and ultimate death. The book of Titus was written after 1 Timothy and before 2 Timothy, as you can tell from the verse below that shows Titus departed from Paul. 2 Timothy 4 verses 10 to 11, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry.